iPhone 16 and 16 Pro are going to be bigger, better, bolder. All Pro models are growing in size from 6.1 inches to 6.3, from 6.7 to 6.9. These are gonna be some big phones, not for everyone. However, the regular 16 and 16 Plus stay the same as 15 and 6.1 and 6.7 inches respectively. But this increase in display size doesn't mean a substantial phone size increase. The rumored dimensions of the 16 Pro and 16 Pro Max look very similar to those of the 15 Pro models with only minor differences that won't really be that noticeable. There's a leaked image of some dummy phones and I don't see that much of a size difference between the 6.1 inch iPhone 16 and 6.3 inch 16 Pro. And also check out this new design of the iPhone 16. While the 16 Pro stays almost the same as the 15 Pro, the 16 gets new looks. The camera array is now vertical with a pill-shaped camera bump with a microphone between the lenses and a flash weirdly offset to the side. It's kind of like the times of the iPhone 10 and 12 are merging into something new. And I'm a bit hesitant about this one. Obviously, it's done for recording spatial videos for the Vision Pro, which seems to be one of the main features that Apple is going to promote in the upcoming years. But honestly, would a person buy a phone that costs around a quarter of what the Vision Pro retails at to record videos for that headset? I doubt it. Unless Apple is cooking up a cheaper version of the Vision Pro, but that's a topic for another video. In this new design, I don't really like the flash being moved so far away from the camera layout, which seems strange to me. I don't know. It seems a bit too unimaginative for Apple. As for the colors, the regular 16 models are once again going to be more bright and colorful, in Apple way, of course. The rumors claim that the new models will come in seven colors, adding white and purple, to the mix. As for the Pro models, the back glass will be manufactured in a similar way like on the iPhone 15, which Apple calls color infusion. Typically, the tech descends from higher-end phones to the lower end, but this time it's another way around. And the leakers say that there will be four colors this year. According to Shrimp Apple Pro, the blue titanium is going to be replaced by the rose color. The same rumor also claims that the natural titanium will be more gray, the white will get more silver-like, similar to the 14 Pro's white. This aligns well with another rumor about the new polished titanium finish, given the phone's a bit glossier appearance. Now, let me just circle back to that bigger display on the 16 Pro. So the rumor goes that Apple will once again make the bezels slimmer, thus fitting this larger display in a chassis that has almost identical dimensions as before. And to do it, they'd have to use a special BRS technology, fitting the circuitry under the bezel more tightly and bending the wiring which is quite a production challenge. The exact width difference is unknown for now, but every little bit helps. And that display on the 16 Pro and Pro Max is also getting an upgrade, switching to micro lens OLED. This could mean much higher brightness and low energy consumption. Honestly, I don't think the higher display brightness makes a ton of sense unless Apple's add some sort of anti-reflective coating like Samsung did on their S24 Ultra because that makes a huge difference. The displays on the regular 16 are gonna stay the same as in the 15 and I have zero issues with that. Those are some great screens though without a high refresh rate of any kind, sad. And by the way, those leaked images from earlier also show the new capture button and an action button becoming standard for all iPhone models. The capture button will be located on the same side of the phone as the power button in the space that is occupied by the 5G millimeter wave antenna in the United States. Like the rest of the buttons in the 16 Pro, the capture button will be mechanical and not capacitive like we thought earlier, yet it will be able to respond to pressure and touch. My guess is that it could have some sort of a touch layer, kind of like in the second gen AirPods Pro. With this button, we'll be able to zoom in and out by swiping left and right on the button, focus with a light press and activate a recording with a more forceful press. At least that's what rumors say. This emulation of a two-step shutter button will make it feel a bit more like a professional camera. And honestly, I can't wait to try it. Also, it must really be something special if Apple plans to implement it both on regular and pro iPhones. As for the action button on regular iPhone 16 and 16 Plus, there is uh, not much to be said here. We all saw what an action button can do, and I seriously doubt that Apple plans to do anything about it. Though it would be nice to finally get the double press functionality 
for some additional customizability. But the most interesting changes to me have to do with the camera systems. It seems like no one in the community of leakers cares about the regular iPhone 16 models because there literally are no other rumors about cameras except for their new arrangement. But judging by how it usually goes, we can surely expect some minor hardware changes such as a slightly better 48 megapixel main sensor, a bit better ultra wide sensor and new image processing algorithms and the ability to record spatial video, of course. All the interesting upgrades are reserved for the Pro models. And there is a lot to unpack here. The main 48 megapixel sensor will get bigger and better, adopting a new stacked lens technology. The rumors suggest that the size will be 12% bigger. And there is also gonna be a digital gain control, allowing for a much better dynamic range and noise control. And I honestly can't underestimate how welcomed these changes are. The main sensor and 15 Pro is already great, but if it gets bigger and more light sensitive, it's gonna be huge. But even bigger changes are coming to the ultra wide camera because it's getting a resolution bump from 12 megapixels to 48 and a new eight element hybrid lens. And this is a huge deal, especially if you like to shoot ultra wide photos. This bigger sensor will let the camera capture more light, finally making it usable in low light. Because let's be honest, ultra wide on the new iPhones at night sucks. But with a bigger sensor, we're likely to get those sweet 48 megapixel images like we do on a main sensor now. This leaves the telephoto camera the only 12 megapixel module. And honestly, I would have wanted it to get the new sensor instead. Zoom is king, you know. But hold on, the zoom camera situation will also change. As we all know, the 15 Pro has a 3X module and the 15 Pro Max has a special Tetra Prism 5X module. So this year, the regular Pro will ditch the 3X in favor of the amazing 5X. And to me, this is kind of a double-edged sword. On the one hand, 5X is a great creativity booster, allowing for more interesting, bolder shots, but 3X is more versatile in real life and portraits. So some people might not be happy about this change, but honestly, I've been using the 15 Pro Max and the 5X was great at all times, no complaints here. The shadiest camera related rumor that somehow still exists is the super zoom on the 16 Pro Max. To put it simply, with the current iPhone hardware equals to 12.5X, which Apple would scale down to 10X. And although this would be a cool feature to have, Samsung has proven that you need an extra step in between, something like 3X or 5X. And if you ask me, I think it would make much more sense to use a 48 megapixel telephoto camera instead of a complicated lens system and then just crop into the image. But the hardware changes in new iPhones are not done yet because there are also the chips. Rumor goes that the 16 Pro and 16 will use the same generation chip, A18 for the iPhone 16 models and A18 Pro for the Pro models. But that's not the interesting part. The next generation A18 chip could feature an upgraded neural engine with significantly more cores, allowing for improved AI machine learning performance, plus it is expected to have a larger die size. All these improvements will serve one purpose. AI, because iOS 18 is gonna be jam-packed with that and we have a great video about that, so be sure to check it out. The new computing power of A18 series chips will allow Apple to give us a smart Siri, able to understand, think, and reason. Finally, after all these years, I really think that adding AI to iPhones is something that should have been done a long time ago. Also, the thermal design and new iPhones might get improved. Remember how there was a heat gate with the 15 Pro models in the first few months? It got fixed eventually, but it's obvious that Apple doesn't want any more of such fuss. So they are working on a new thermal design, possibly even using graphene. That's cool and new. Maybe now the phone won't overheat and dim the brightness while playing games. Yeah, there's one little rumor about new iPhones that I don't like. The battery is getting smaller. Whoa, hold on. It only happens to the 16 Plus. All other iPhones actually get a bigger battery. It's unclear why Apple would do this, but the reason might be differentiation. By giving 16 Plus a smaller battery, Apple creates more division, making Pro Max look like a better deal all around. Though one thing will be common for all new batteries, stacked design. This should bring a bit higher efficiency, lower charging temperatures, and support for higher speed charging. Again, every little bit helps. Oh wait, there are two rumors that I don't like. The price 
prices could go up. Apparently, the production of the iPhone 15s costs Apple more than it did before. About 20% more for the Pro Max model, 16% for the 15, 10% for 15 Plus, and 8% for the 15 Pro. So yeah, seeing a price increase this year sounds like a very plausible thing. But aside from that, I really like how the new iPhones are shaping up, refined and better in every way. They will definitely be worth upgrading to from older models, something like 13 or 14 series. I'm really pumped for that new 16 Pro Max, so be sure to sub to the channel to not miss our review of it. And while you're waiting for that September event, make sure to check out our video with iOS 18. It's uh, really good. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.